Hey guys, welcome back to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel and in this episode we're going to discuss some snake genetics and specifically I want to talk about recessive snake genetics you may have heard the term het pied in addition to that there's also 100% het pied 50% het pied and possible het pied and in this episode I want to talk about the differences between those terms. Okay, so to kick things off in the study of genetics, I'd like to discuss first the codominant versus the recessive. And if you think about the codominant, for example, a bamboo is codominant, and, and a bamboo can either have zero copies of the gene, have one copy of the gene, or two copies of the bamboo gene. It's the maximum number of genes you can have at any one particular place is two copies. And, and for example, a visual bamboo has just one copy of the gene. If there's no copies, then it would be like a normal wild type ball python. If it has two copies, it would actually be a super bamboo, which is an all white snake. So take a look at this. I actually have a bamboo over here. This is my bamboo male. And he has one copy of the bamboo gene. And if he had two copies of the gene, he would look something like um, something like this. This is actually a lesser bamboo, but a super bamboo would be similar to an all-white snake. And of course, if they have no copies of the bamboo gene, it would look something similar to this. This is my scaleless head, but this is it would look like a wild type snake. So so generally, if you have no copies of the gene in, in a codominant, it would look like a regular, normal, wild type snake. And the thing about the thing about codominant is you can actually see one copy of the gene. So, for example, if you took this bamboo and you bred it to a normal, half the babies would come out bamboo. Now let's contrast that to a recessive. So, for example, my pied is a recessive. So if I took this pied male and I bred it to a normal, all the babies would have one copy of the gene, but they would all look like normals. <laughs> they wouldn't look like pieds. And so, for example, uh, I actually have a het caramel female over here. This girl has one copy of the caramel albino gene. And the caramel albino looks its like a different shade of albino. And you can't tell that she actually has that caramel albino gene. But I know from the genetics, from the breeder, the breeder, one of the parents was actually a caramel albino. So I know for sure that this girl has one copy of the caramel albino gene. And that's what we call 100% het caramel albino. Okay, so the percentage of the caramel albino or the pied or the clown or any of the recessive genes, when we talk about the percentage, I know 100%, I'm 100% sure that that snake has one copy of the caramel albino gene. That's why we say 100%. And I actually bred my scaleless head male with that last year and I popped out this baby. Take a look at this. This is my female. 50% het caramel albino. Let's see if I can get her out without taking a bite. <laughs> so this girl is 50% het caramel albino. So what I did is I bred uh, my scaleless head with this one, this caramel albino. And if you breed to a caramel albino, uh, something that's het caramel albino, 50% of the babies are going to come out with one copy of the caramel albino gene, but you don't know if this actually has, there's a 50% chance that this snake has the caramel albino gene. And that's why we say this is 50% het caramel albino. Okay, so here's where things get a little bit interesting. If you take that 50% het caramel albino and you actually bred it back to a visual caramel albino and you actually proved it out and some of the babies were visuals, then you would know for sure that it was 100% het. So that it's funny because you can have a 50% het until you prove it, and then it becomes 100% het. So now, if you know it's 100% het, all the babies from breeding to the normal are now going to be, instead of possible heads, they'll be 50% heads. And keep in mind, they're only 50% heads until you prove out those babies. And, and, and the thing is that, that it really gets diluted further and further and further 
if you don't breed it back and verify it with the caramel albino visual, it, it just kind of gets diluted and, and just becomes a possible het caramel albino. Okay, so here's another interesting thing. You can actually have a 66% chance of it being het for a recessive gene. And the way that works is you take something that's 100% het and you breed it to another snake that's 100% het and you have you almost you increase your odds because you have two known hets and you actually get if you breed them together I think it's like 25% of the babies are actually visuals and then all the non-visuals are 66% for that recessive gene. So if you're new to ball pythons, I thought I'd go through my collection and point out some of my recessive genes so you know the difference between what's recessive and what's dominant or co-dominant. And probably the first thing that comes to mind is the albino. So I actually have an albino female over here and she is actually 100% head pied. And if I actually, if I bred this to a normal, all the babies would come out 100% het albino and 50% het pied. So half the babies would carry the, the het pied, but you wouldn't know which ones were which until you proved them out. <laughs> and let's see, I actually have some desert ghost stuff over here. Desert ghost is recessive. This is a pastel desert ghost male. And uh, I'm actually working it into some of my lemon blasts, trying to get the pinstripe and some other stuff into the Desert Ghost. Uh, let's see, here is a pied. The pied is actually another recessive gene, so if I cross this with the normal, all the babies would come out looking normal and would be 100% head pied. And I actually have some uh, double recessives, my albino pied mixes the albino and the pied together, both are recessive, and if I bred this to a normal, all the babies would be 100% het pied and 100% het albino. Alright buddy, alright. <laughs> and then, let's see, I have a clown, I have a lot of recessive stuff, so my clown, this is my clown female, it is recessive too. And uh, I'm definitely, I'm, it's definitely past feeding day, like one day past feeding day. That's where they're all kind of looking out and <laughs> wondering, where's my food? But that is some of my, uh, pretty much, I pretty much think that's pretty much all I have for recessives, except for the caramel albino. And the caramel albino I actually bought as a het. I actually don't have a visual. So I'll have to actually breed some of my 50% hets back to my head caramel albino and hope for hope for some visuals I'm actually hoping to get some scaleless head stuff back into my caramel albino visuals okay so another thing I should mention when you're trying to prove out your snakes is specifically if you have something for example my 50 percent head caramel albino and I'm trying to prove it out and and verify if it's really a head caramel albino or not it's it either is or it isn't it has one copy of the gene or it doesn't have one copy of the gene and and the, really the only way to know is to breed it to another caramel albino and to look for the offspring to see if you get any visuals with two copies of the genes and remember the statistics can play mind games with you I've seen people take a bamboo breed it to a normal and get a whole clutch of bamboos I mean what what's the odds of that it's uh, on average it's typically 50 percent when you breed a bamboo to a normal 50% of the babies will be bamboo. And remember, the, the odds can go the other way. So if you breed the bamboo to the normal, you could get a whole clutch of normals. And it's the same thing with the recessive, especially if you're trying to prove something out that's 50% head. You, you need really, you need multiple clutches. And I would say probably at least two, maybe three clutches to really prove it out and to figure out if it really is head for that recessive gene. Okay, since we're talking about genetics and recessive genetics, I should throw out a term, and that is allelic. And allelic is really two different genes that are compatible, and they're actually, uh, they actually exist at the same location on the gene. So, for example, you can have a bamboo and a lesser, and it's actually, instead of two copies of the bamboo or two copies of the lesser, they're actually at the same location, and you can't really have... 
uh, super lesser super bamboo because that would be actually f four genes at the same location. And it's kind of similar to uh, the candino. So the candy is, is really close to the albino gene and the albino is, is allelic with candy and, and, and you can get actually a snake with one copy of the albino gene and a one copy of the candy gene and they call that snake a candino. So that wraps up my discussion of the differences between 100% het, 66% het, 50% het or possible het for a recessive gene. And remember those numbers can change once you prove it out and then it becomes either 0% het or 100% het. It either has that gene or it doesn't. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.